بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام الأتمان الأكملان على خير خلق الله أجمعين وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهديه واستنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وأرنا الحق حقا ورزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا ورزقنا اجتنابه واجعلنا ممن يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته In the previous sessions, we spoke about matters related to the heart that, bas- that basically push one and drive one to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, giving a person a strong resolve and setting aside his laziness, getting to know Allah through his names, his attributes. This causing a person to fall in love with Allah once he knows who Allah is. And then looking forward to the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also fearing Him. All of these things, ma'rifatullah, mahabbatullah, al-raja, al-khawf, all of these things are actions of the heart and each one of them plays a role in pushing you to to want to please Allah and pushing you and driving you to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the reason why many of us, we don't find that pleasure in our ibadah and we find it, you know, times like Ramadan lazy. We find ourselves lazy. The reason is because we're lacking in one of these aspects. Now, how about once we have pushed ourselves to worship Allah? So we have now, you know, we 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 now have been encouraged to worship Allah. One way or the other. And now we've made the determination that okay, that's it. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this good deed or I'm going to do that good deed or, you know, I'm going to do this act of ibadah. Tonight, I'm going to pray this many rak'at. Today, I'm going to sit, I'm going to open the mushaf. I'm going to recite the Qur'an. I'm going to finish this many uh, pages or this many ajza' of the Qur'an. So you're ready. So, Now that you are standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the question is, what state should your heart be in? What state should your heart be in now as you are performing the act of ibadah? And specifically, what we want to focus on here today is As-salah, praying, and what state our heart should be in, in the the state of salah. And so the state that our heart should be in when we're standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is what we call the state of al-khushur, which is basically when the fear of Allah and the veneration of Allah through knowing who Allah is, this overtakes your heart. Making your heart to humble itself before the might of Allah, the greatness of Allah. And then having that humility to appear over the rest of your body and your actions. And so once you are in this state, 
you are now ready to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a state that is beloved to Allah. Once khushu' overtakes your heart, this is now the state that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see you in while you are addressing Him and you are standing before Him, praying to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this state of al-khushu' is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke of in the Qur'an. And so Allah praised the believers who have khushu'. And so Allah said, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Successful indeed are the believers. الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ Those who are humbly submissive during their salah, those who have khushu' in their salah. And so khushu' is one of the most important characteristics of the believers. Because here in Surah Al-Mu'minun, Allah starts the surah by saying, successful indeed are the believers. And then Allah mentions several of their characteristics. But Allah begins by mentioning this, showing the importance of al-khushu'. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in Surah Al-Hadid, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَمْ يَأْنِ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَن تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَمَا نَزَلَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ Has the time not come for those who believe that their hearts should become humbly submissive at the remembrance of Allah and what has come down of the truth the Qur'an, has the time not come for our hearts to be filled with khushu' when we hear the remembrance of Allah or when we are reciting the dhikr of Allah and what Allah has sent of the truth, meaning the Qur'an? Our hearts are hardened. And that's why when we hear the Qur'an, we're not affected. When we recite the Qur'an, our hearts don't shake. And so here Allah is asking, has the time not come for our hearts to become softened and for khushu' to overtake our hearts? وَلَا يَكُونُوا, ولا يكونوا كَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ, قبله, من قَبْلُ فَطَالَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْأَمَدُ فَقَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ And let them not be like those who were given the scripture before us, the Jews and the, and the Christians. And a long time passed over them, meaning a long time passed and no new revelation came to them. And so their hearts became hardened. And so the reason why most of us do not find pleasure in our salah is because of our lack of khushu' in it. The reason why most of us do not find pleasure in our salah, rather we find it burdensome, we find it tiresome. When we enter into our salah, we start yawning. If we're praying taraweeh and we're behind the imam, we're wondering, you know, when is he going to finish? We find the salah to be a burden on us. We don't find any pleasure in it. One of the main reasons for it is our lack of khushu' in it. And so this could be a sign of weak iman. This could be a sign of a lack of yaqeen, certainty, conviction. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ Salah is burdensome 
it's heavy except for those who have khushu' in it. And then Allah describes them. Those who are certain that they will meet their Lord. The people of Khushu' are those who have yaqeen in Allah. Their heart is filled with certainty and conviction of Allah and what Allah has promised. That is why they have khushu'. That is why their hearts are over, overtaken with this sense of, you know, majesty for Allah. This sense of feeling of the veneration of Allah, the greatness of Allah, that causes their hearts and their state to become humble and submissive and full of humility in their salah. It is this state of khushu' that basically brings concentration in salah. It is this description that we have explained of khushu' this is what brings concentration in your salah. Khushu' and concentration, they go hand in hand. Once a person has khushu', he has concentration. And so this salah is heavy for those who do not have khushu' in it, and khushu' is heavy for those who are weak in yaqeen in Allah and the hereafter. And it's unfortunate that most of us, if not all of us, are guilty for not having complete khushu' in our salah. It's an unfortunate reality that we live with in this time and day, in this age, where almost all of us, without exception, we don't have this khushu' in our salah, or that complete level of khushu' that is required. And it seems like we are getting nearer and nearer to that time that the Prophet wasallam spoke of, when he said, that the first thing to be lifted from this ummah, the first thing to be removed from this ummah, will be khushur, until you don't see anyone in this ummah who has khushur. Khushur, my dear brothers and sisters, is something that people, they differ in its levels according to their level of knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His names and His attributes. And according to their level of the sense of muraqaba, the sense of Allah watching over them, and according to their level of their apprehension of the nature of their nafs and its deficiencies and according to their level of understanding the kalam of Allah, the Qur'an, and contemplating over the meanings of the Qur'an that is recited in Salah. And so some people, they achieve khushu' by realizing how close they are to Allah while in a state of Salah. Realizing that Allah is paying close attention to each and every single small word that they say, small movement that they make, making them to feel a sense of shame at directing their attention to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while they are in that state. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only is observing their every word and their every action, but also their every thought. And so some people, they achieve this khushu' by bringing this to mind, that I'm standing before Allah. He is watching my every movement, my every word and my every thought. I should feel ashamed 
at directing my thoughts to others besides Allah, while I'm addressing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, while I'm standing before Him. Others, they achieve khushu' by realizing the perfectness of Allah's names and attributes. They realize the perfectness of Allah through His names and attributes. And so, when they're calling upon Allah, and they're in Salah, and certain names of Allah are being mentioned, these names of Allah, they cause, the, they cause you to fall in love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of who He is. And then wanting to pre- present their Salah to Allah in a way that is pleasing to Him. Others, they achieve khushu' by realizing the power and the might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how Allah seizes those who transgress His bounds and He punishes them. This causes them to fall in line and not get distracted while they are in the state of Salah. Realizing that Allah is the all-powerful, the almighty. In the split of a second, He will take He will seize those who transgress his bounds and he will punish them severely. Having this in your mind, it causes you to focus and to be in that state of khushu in your salah. Ibn Qayyim, Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah, he divides the worshippers into five categories he divides them into five categories with respect to al khushu'. He says that the people are not all at the same level in their khushu'. Rather, they are at different levels. And he mentions five different levels. He says, firstly, those who are neglectful of their salah. They are neglectful of the conditions of salah, for example, their wudu, that they're supposed to have wudu, or not performing their wudu properly, or they're neglectful of the times of salah, not praying their salah on time, or they're neglectful of some of the arkan and the wajibat of salah, the pillars of salah, the obligatory acts of salah. There are certain things that we must do in our salah that are either pillars or obligatory acts. And so these people, they're neglectful of their salah and they're neglectful of the conditions of the pillars and the wajibat. They don't pay any attention to any of that. He says, such people, they will be punished for not performing their salah in the manner in which Allah has commanded. They will be punished. The second category, those who they pay attention to the conditions of salah and the pillars and the wajibat, the obligatory acts, but they are neglectful of khushu' allowing thoughts to overtake them and not putting up a fight against those thoughts. And so they don't have full concentration and they don't give any attention to this aspect of khushu' in the salah. So they neglect it and they allow thoughts to overtake them and they don't put up a fight. They don't you know, struggle against these thoughts. And many people, they're like this. From the time they enter their salah until the time they finish, they don't have any khushu'ah. But they do make sure that they are praying properly, outwardly, physically. And so he says, such people, they will be held accountable before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
such people, they will be held accountable before Allah. The third category, those who pay attention to the conditions and the outward pillars and obligations of Salah, and also pay attention to khushur. They put up a fight against their thoughts and their whisperings to the best of their ability, but they are defeated by shaitan, by their nafs. They're not able to continue that fight. And so he says, such people, they will be expiated for their struggle. They put up a fight, and so perhaps their shortcomings in their salah will be expiated because of, because of their mujahada, because of their struggle. The fourth category, he says, those who fulfill the pillars the obligations of Salah, while their heart has completely dedicated itself to Salah, so they have khushur, such that their thoughts do not bother them, and they don't have to busy themselves with fighting against their thoughts. Rather, all they are busy with is making their Salah perfect as Allah wants it. He says, such people, they will be rewarded they will be rewarded for their salah. The fifth category. You might be wondering, how could there be another category after this? Yes, there's a fifth category. Ibn Qayyim says, those who fulfill the pillars and the obligations of salah, while their heart has completely dedicated itself to salah, but on top of that, their heart has become filled with love and veneration for Allah, which makes them to pray as if they can see Allah, as if Allah is right before them, and they are watching Allah before them, such that thoughts don't even come to them to begin with. He says, such people are the righteous servants of Allah, who are the closest of people to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so these are the five categories that Ibn Qayyim mentions. The question is, does this mean that if we don't have khushu' in salah or we lack it, that our salah will not count? The answer is no. But we will be rewarded for our salah according to the level of our khushu'. As for merely performing the salah, then this fulfills the obligation more than it earns reward. And so there's something called fulfilling an obligation. Allah commanded us to pray five times a day. You are praying five times a day. Making sure that you, know, you fulfill the, 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 the shurut, the conditions of salah, the arkan, the pillars of salah, the, the wajibat. But you're lacking in khushur. Here we say you have fulfilled an obligation. So you won't be held accountable for not praying your five daily salawat. But now, everyone who prays, they have fulfilled their obligation, but not everyone leaves from their salah with the same reward. It's the added reward. This is where, this is where people differ. Two people can be praying in jama'ah next to each other. By the end of the salah, one leaves with zero reward, and the other leaves with hundreds and hundreds of rewards. The Prophet ﷺ said in this regard, A person may pray a salah, and nothing of it is recorded for him, 
meaning of reward, except a tenth of it, a ninth of it, an eighth of it, a seventh of it, a sixth of it, a fifth of it, a quarter of it, a third of it, or half of it. Meaning that we are, re- we are rewarded for our salah according to how perfect we make it, inwardly and outwardly, inwardly with al khushu'ah. And so this is basically our discussion concerning al khushu'ah. And so now we come to the question of once we've understood the importance of al-khushu' the question is how can we achieve khushu' in our salah we all complain of a lack of khushu' we all complain that we are distracted in our salah and we all complain of a lack of attention and a lack of humility in our salah so what can help us to achieve al-khushu' in our salah, there are many things. There are many things that we can mention. But we'll try to mention the most important, the most important of these things. Starting with the most important thing, and that is to develop a love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our hearts. Once we have developed that love for Allah in our hearts, we will want to worship Allah in a state that he is pleased with. It will come automatically. Once your heart is filled with the love of Allah and ikhlas and niyyah, sincerity of intention, then that's it. Your khushu will automatically build. After that, we say there are many things that will help you to develop khushu in your salah. Quickly, we'll mention these. Firstly, Coming to Allah and coming to the Salah with a sincere heart. Leaving everyone else behind. Why are you praying? Not for others, but rather sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. After that, bearing in mind the greatness of Allah as you stand before Him. When you stand and you're saying, Allahu Akbar, Think of the meaning of what you're saying. Allahu Akbar. Allah is the greatest. The greatness of Allah. Bring this to your mind as you're standing there before Allah. That there's nothing more greater than Allah. So why should I busy my mind with other things which are insignificant compared to the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? After that, bear in mind that Allah is watching you as you pray. Bear in mind that that you are standing before Allah and Allah is watching you. He is watching your every word, your every action, your every thought. After that, bear in mind that Allah is in front of you as you pray to Him. As the Prophet ﷺ said, that when we pray, we shouldn't spit in front of us, because Allah is in front of us. Meaning, Allah is in this direction. And that's why we're not allowed that anyone come in front of us when we're praying. Why? Because we're praying to Allah. Why should others come and disconnect that link between us and Allah? So the point is, bear in mind that Allah is in front of you. After that, remind yourself, of the deficiencies of your nafs. It is your nafs, your soul, that you are struggling with in your salah. Your nafs is trying to distract you and remind you, oh, you know, I had that appointment today. Oh, I forgot to do that today. Oh, I have to do this today. It's your nafs. Remind yourself that it is this nafs of yours that is leading you to the hellfire. It is this nafs that is inclining to evil that 
you need to bring in under your control. After that, remind yourself or pray. Pray the salah of one who is praying his last salah. Pray the salah of one who is praying his farewell prayer. Who, that's it. He knows that after this, I'm never going to be able to pray another salah. The angel of death is coming to take away my soul. My appointment with death is after this salah. I won't have any salah after this. Pray as if this is your last prayer. After that, imagine yourself standing on the sirat, that bridge that leads the believers across the hellfire. Imagine yourself when you're praying that you're on that bridge. This will cause your heart to become fearful of the punishment of Allah. Imagine as if you could see the hellfire right before your eyes and across you can see Jannah. After that, empty out your heart of everything except your salah. Empty out your heart of everything except for your salah. The only thing that you should be focused on right now is your salah. After that, contemplate over the meanings of what you are reciting in your salah. Yes, you may not know the Arabic language, but read the meanings, the translation. And if you can, try your best to understand the words of Allah, the Qur'an, and contemplate over these words. That's why the Salaf, when they would pray, when they would come across an ayah related to the mercy of Allah, the forgiveness of Allah. After reciting that ayah, they would ask Allah for forgiveness. They would ask Allah for His mercy. When coming across a verse talking about the punishment of Allah, they would seek refuge in Allah from His punishment. Why? Because they are, they are focused and they know what they're reciting. Unlike most of us, we recite the Qur'an in our salah and we don't have a clue of what we have recited. After that, it's important to make sure that you pray in a place where you are not distracted. Pray in a place where you won't be distracted. Pray at a time when you're not distracted. Also, it's important to look and keep your eyes fixed on the place of your sujood, which is why the Prophet ﷺ told us that when we are in the state of salah, we should be looking nowhere else except, except at the place of our sujood. Also, pray slowly, calmly, with tranquility. Many people, they rush through their salah, which is wrong. This is one of the reasons why we don't have khushur. Also, if we are ever distracted in our salah, then the remedy for that is by saying, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ Seek refuge in Allah from shaitan because it is shaitan who tries to distract us in our salah. And then after salah, conclude your salah by, you know, remembering Allah, the various adhkar of salah. That's why right after salah we say, astaghfirullah, because of our shortcomings in our salah. We should end our salah by asking Allah to forgive us. And so these are some of the means, some of the things that will help us be idhnillahi ta'ala to develop khushu' in our salah. I want to conclude with a very profound and beautiful statement of Ibn Qayyim concerning al khushu'. He says, every individual must stand before Allah twice. You will stand before Allah twice. He says, the first is when he stands before him in salah. 
meaning in this dunya, when you stand before Allah in your salah. And the second, when you stand before Allah on the day of judgment. He says, whoever stands before Allah as he should in the first instance, meaning in his salah, then the second standing, meaning on the day of judgment, will be made easy for him. But whoever is heedless with regards to this standing, meaning in salah, you're heedless of your salah, you don't pay attention to your salah, you don't care about having khushu' in your salah, then the second standing, the standing on the Day of Judgment will be made more difficult for you. And that's because the Prophet ﷺ said that the very, very first thing that we will be brought to account for on the Day of Judgment is this Salah. The first thing that Allah will question us about on the Day of Judgment concerning the rights of Allah is a salah. So if you perfected it in this dunya, then you'll be able to easily answer Allah on the Day of Judgment. And everything that comes after that will be made easy for you. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us this khushur in our salah. Because once we have it, we will be on a different level. We will leave this world when we are in that state of ibadah, when we are worshipping Allah while we're in our salah. The reason why most of us fail to find that sweetness and that pleasure in our ibadah, in our salah, is because of our lack of khushu'ah. Once we have it, we will be in a different world and we will taste that sweetness in our salah. We ask Allah to grant us this khushu in our salah, and we ask Allah to help us to make the most of our month of Ramadan in seclusion with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, pleasing Allah and worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a state that He loves, in a state that He is pleased with. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.